ज्ञानकोश पुराणास इंट्रोडक्शन सर्गच्च प्रतिसर्गच्च वंशो मन्वंतराणि च वंशानुचरितं चैव पुराणं पञ्चलक्षणं विष्णुपुराण पार्ट 4 description of vaivaswat manu's lineage lineage of vaivaswat manu finds its origin at brahma brahma was the first to appear from lord vishnu who is the primitive cause for the whole creation from the right hand thumb of brahma daksha prajapati appear daksha produced aditi and aditi produced Vishwan Manu was the son of Vishwavan Ikshvaku Rig Grist Saryati Narsimhati Pranshu Nabhag Dishta Karup and Prishardha are the ten sons of Manu with a desire for a son Manu organized a yagna to please the deities Mitra and Varuna but During the yajna because of a wrong resolution of a later a daughter named Ila was born to them but by the grace of Mitra Varuna she got masculine appearance and a name Sudhyama in later course by the wrath of Lord Shiva Sudhyamna was converted into a woman a woman form when Sudhyamna was roaming near the hermitage of Buddha the son of Chandrama her beauty infatuated buddha as a result of their union a son pururva was born even after the birth of pururva sudhyamna could not give up his temptation to be a man again hence learned sages organized a yagna for sudhyamna and got him converted into a man again in masculine form sudhyamna produced three sons Utkal, Gaya, and Vinat. Manu had presented a town named Prastishta to Sudhyamna, which he later on presented to Pururva. Pururva's progeny spread in all directions and acquired Kshatriya caste. Manu's son Prishadra became a Shudra because of killing a cow of his teacher. Manu's another son. Karush produced an exceptionally strong kshatriya named Karush lineage of Dishta grew as follows Nabhag Balabhandhan Kirtiman Vasapriti Pranshu Prajapati Khanitra Chakshuks Vimbha Vivimbhak Khanimetra Atribhuti Kardama avikshit and marut marut had a son narishyat lineage of narishyat grew vi dama rajavardhan sur ridhi keval sugrihit nara chandra keval bhanduman veghavan buddha trivindu trivindu had a daughter ilavila and a son vishal Vishal in later course founded Vishala. Lineage of Vishal grew to be Hemachandra, Chandra, Dhamurak, Srinjaya, Sahadeva, Krishava, Somadatta, Janmejaya and Sumati. Manu's son Shreyati had a daughter Sukanya who was married to Sage Chavan in peculiar circumstances. Anarath was the son of Shariyati. Anarath had a son, Raivat, who founded his capital at Kushasthali and ruled his kingdom on earth. Raivat had 100 sons, the eldest among whom was Kaku Dhumi. He had a daughter, Revati. Raivat took Revati with him and approached Brahma, who asked about a suitable match for her. At that time Gandharvas were singing near Brahma Raivat listened to their songs intensely and forgot about the passage of time 
many ages passed like that but rai was fell as if only one hour has passed when the gandharva stopped singing rai was once again asked brahma about a suitable match for rai revati brahma asked rai was about his own choices first rai was counted the names of many deserving princes sis and kings of all who belong to earth brahma said smilingly no one even in the progeny of these people is alive on earth because here listening to the gandharva songs you have passed four ages presently even the age of 18th manu is about to end on earth and kali yuga is about to start these words frightened raivad who agreed brahma and asked oh lord now tell me whom should i marry revati to brahma said that unborn all pervasive parmeshwar lord vishnu had taken an incarnation on earth okay your capital at the kushastali which was equal to indra's abode amravati is now dwarakapuri in that dwarakapuri stays baladev who is a part of lord vishnu marry this daughter to him because she is a jewel among the women folk at baladeva he is praised all over the world by all hence only he deserves to be your son in law hearing the verdict of brahma prajapati raivat descended on the earth and saw that an amazing transformation had taken place in the appearance of people who were now smaller in stature ugly dull and devoid of strength even his capital kushastali had acquired a new appearance and was now known as dwarakapuri rai was found out by Bal- baladev and married his granddaughter revati to him but revati appeared quite large and taller in stature than baladev because of age difference while they pressed her slightly with anterior part of his floor and she assumed a stature equal to normal woman after marrying revati to baladev rai vat migrated to the himalayas to observe penance description of ishwaku lineage ishwaku was born from the nostril of manu as a result of sudden sneezing ishwaku had 100 sons among whom vikushi nimi and danda were prominent once ishwaku originated a shraddha for the purpose of feeding brahmin he ordered his son vikushi to bring fresh meat of wild animals taking his bow and arrows vikushi set out for the forest and hunted many deer and rabbits towards noon he felt tired and hungry and hence ate one rabbit from the stock then he reached the capital and handed over the remaining flesh to his father towards noon he left tired and hungry and hence at once rabbit from the stock then he reached the capital and handed over the remaining flesh to his father but the sage vasista who was conducting the shraddha revealed the truth to manu thus vikushi got the name of shashad and was expelled by his father shashad in later course had a son puranjay in the past a fierce battle had taken place between the demons and the gods the demons defeated the gods who approached lord vishnu for help lord vishnu said i am aware of your desire i will appear in he body of shashad's son puranjay to kill the demons but it is your responsibility to convince him for the battle the gods approached puranjay and requested o oh great among the kshatriyas kindly help us to defeat our enemies puranjay said shatkratu is indra if i fight the battle riding his shoulder i'll be able to kill the demons the gods accepted his condition indra took the guise of the bull riding which puranjay killed the demons because lord vishnu 
had partially arrived in his body. Since then, Puranjay got the name Kakusht. He had a son, Ananya, lineage of Ananya, grew as Ananya, Prithu, Vishisht, Prabha, Chandra, Yuvanshwa, Shastwa. Shastwa founded the town of Shashwati, modern Shravasti. Lineage of Shravasta continued as Shashastva, Vridhashva, Kuvalashva, Dridhashva, Tandrashva, and Kapilashva. For a long time, Yuvanashva did not have a child, so he organized a Putreshti Yajna in the auspicious of learned sages. The Yajna lasted for a whole day. At midnight, when the Yajna ended, Sages fell asleep because of tiredness, keeping the urn of yajna water near the altar. The water had been empowered with sacred mantras. Meanwhile, the thirsty king came there and drank that water from the urn. When the sage awakened, they inquired about the water in the urn. Yuvavanshwa told them that he had himself drunk it. The sages told that as the water had been empowered with sacred mantra and was meant for the queen in order to make her conceive, as the king instead of the queen will conceive now. As a result, Yuvavanshwa conceived and in due course gave birth to a child from his right armpit. But the child's birth did not kill the king. <coughs> The baby was Mandata. In due course, Mandata ruled the entire earth, which was divided into seven islands. Mandata married Bindumati, the daughter of Shatabindu. They had three sons, Purukhushta, Ambarish, and Muchukunda. They also had fifty daughters. When all the daughters grew young, a sage Shubhari arrived in the palace and requested Mandata to marry one of his daughters <coughs> to him. The sage appeared old and fragile, so Mandata hesitated and tried to send him off, making many excuses. The sage assured him about his physical abilities, but still the king felt hesitant and said, O oh, sage, it is our tradition that we marry our daughter only to he whom our daughter chooses as her husband. Your request is beyond our desires. Hearing Mandata's words, Sage considered for a moment and said, All right, O King, kindly instruct the Yuanch who guards the quarters of your daughters to escort me there. Fearing, fearing a curse from the Sage, Mandata instructed the Yuanch to escort him into the quarters of his daughters. While entering the quarters, this sage assumed the appearance of an extremely handsome Gandharva. So when he arrived there, a row started among the girls as to who would choose him as her husband first. Each one of them claimed that he, she had first chosen him. Thus all the daughters of Mandata chose sage Shobhari as their husband. When the Yanch informed the king about his de this development, he fell in deep thoughts how it could happen. But still he was bound by his promise, so he had no choice but to marry all his daughters to Sage Shobhari. Marrying all the fifty girls, Sage Shobhari brought them to his hermitage. Calling Vishwakarma, he instructed him to build separate castles for each of his wives. In no time, Vishwakarma erected fifty beautiful palaces in a row. Each one of them had ample, spacious and airy rooms surrounded by beautiful gardens. Since then, all the girls occupied those palaces and began to live there. Every kind of luxury and food was available to them. One day, drawn by the love for his daughters, King Mandata decided to visit Shobhari's ashram. But in place of ashram, he found a row of beautiful palaces. There he met his daughters and inquired about their well-being. The daughters informed him that 
they were happy to live with the sage and laws that their husband was capable enough to provide them with all the luxuries but still they remembered their native place each of the girl also expressed one grief that her husband enjoyed intimacy with her at all times and did not share time with her other sisters these words of the girl surprised the king ultimately he met saubhari and worshiping him he said o oh lord it is the result of your severe penance that you are able to keep all the 50 girls happy staying there for a few days the king returned in due course the daughters of mandaka gave birth to 150 sons those sons grew up and produced their progeny at that time sage bari thought i have seen the birth of my sons now they have their own son if i stay there i will long to see my great grandchildren desires do not end till death acquiring a human body is in itself a great sorrow i have received enough in life enjoyed intimacy with 50 princes if i keep more desires i will receive nothing but sorrow hence i could take the to the penance of lord vishnu thinking that way sage sobari migrated to the forest along with his 50 wives there they conducted yagyas and passed their time worshiping lord vishnu mandata trishanku and sagar once upon a time gandharvas of collective name maunya defeated the nagas and snatched all their wealth and powers the nagas prayed lord vishnu to rescue them lord vishnu told them that he would appear in mandata's son purukshta and kill the gandharvas afterwards narmada brought purukshta to rasatal where lord vishnu appeared in his body thus having the strength of lord vishnu purukshta defeated and killed the gandharvas pleased by the action of narmada the nagas blessed her with a boon that whoever remembered her would have no fear of snake venom and purukshta that he would have an immortal son purukshta and narmada had a son trasadasyu lineage of trasadasyu continued like trasadasyu anarnya vrishda harshwa harshwa hasta sumana tridanva trigya runi and satyavrat satyavrat became famous as trishanku in later course by the curse of a sage trishanku had become a chandala once a drought occurred for 12 long years during that drought to get rid of his condition of chandala and feed sage vishwamitra trishanku used to tie a whole skin deer to a banyan tree on the bank of the river ganges pleased by his selfless service sage vishwamitra sent trishanku to the heaven with his empirical body lineage of trishanku grew as trishanku harishchandra rohitashwa harith chanchchau vijay and vasudev vijay had a son ruruk ruruk's son was vrik who had a son bahu bahu had two queens after a long time of their marriage bahu's queen consort conceived a son but the circumstances took a strange turn bahu's enemies together attacked his kingdom and defeated him the defeated king migrated to the forest along with his queens and began to live at the hermitage of sage aru Very soon king Bahu died of old age his queen consort also wanted to commit sati but sage aru prevented her from doing so after some time getting envious of her fortune the other queen deceitfully fed her with poison but the poison could not harm the fetus which stayed unborn for a period of 7 years because of poison's effect staying at the hermitage of sage aru the queen consort gave birth to a son since the child was born with the effect of the poison sage aru named him as sagar 
Sagar began to grow in his hermitage in natural surroundings. One day he asked his mother about his father. The queen narrated the whole incident to him. Sagar then and there took an oath to exterminate the Kshatriyas who had been the cause of his father's death. Acting as per his oath, Sagar destroyed Hayaha Kshatriyas, whereas Shaka Kshatriyas got their heads shaven out of fear. Since those Kshatriyas had given up their religion, hence Brahmins boycotted them. As a result, they became Melecha. Therefore, and thereafter, King Sagara returned to his capital and ruled the earth. Description of Surya Vansha King Sagar had two queens, Sumati, the daughter of Kashyapa, and Keshini, the daughter of Vidharpa's king. Keshini had a son, Asamanjas, whereas Sumati had 60,000 sons. Anshuman was the son of Asamanjas. Asamanjas was very whimsical since his childhood. Even in his youth, he did not change his behavior. Hence, King Sagar had abandoned Ashmanjas. But the things did not improve for Sagar because even his 60,000 sons followed the footsteps of Asmanjas. The gods one day approached sage Kapila, who was a partial incarnation of Lord Vishnu. Greeting way, the earth would not remain suitable for living. Sage Kapila assured the gods that the 60,000 sons of Sagra would meet their fate very soon. By the instigation of Sage Kapila, King Sagar organized an Ashwamedha Yagya. The 60,000 princes also followed the horse guarding it. But somehow Indra managed to kidnap the horse and tethered it at the hermitage of Sage Kapila. The 60,000 princes searched for the horse and following the footsteps, they also reached the hermitage. There they found the horse and also a sage in deep meditation, thinking that the sage might have been responsible for abduction of the horse. They began to abuse him. As soon as sage Kapila, disturbed by the abuses, opened his eyes, a flame appeared and they incinerated all the 60,000 princes. When King Sagra came to know about his this incident, he sent Anshuman to bring back that horse. Anshuman also reached the hermitage and greeted Sage Kapila with respect. Pleased by his politeness, Sage Kapila blessed Anshuman and instructed him to take the horse away with him. He also asked him to seek a boon, as the boon Anshuman only sought the salvation for his 60,000 dead uncles. Jnana Koshala assured Anshuman that his ancestors would certainly attain to the heaven but only by after a long wait and that his Koshya Bhagiras would Itihasans. bring the Ganges onto the Ramayana. earth and that the Ganges pact would wash the ashes of his ancestors to the ocean and cause their salvation. Thus blessed by the sage Kapila, Anshuman returned to the capital with the horse in order to help his grandfather finish the yajna. Anshuman had a son Dilip. Dilip's son was Bhagiras, who observed severe penance and pleased Ganga to descend on the earth. Since the Ganges had descended on earth because of Bhagiras' penance, she also got a name Bhagirathi. The lineage of Bhagirath grew as Bhagirath, Shuhotra, Shusti, Naghabhag, Ambarish, Shindu, Dweep, Ayutayu, Ritapurva, Sarvakam, Sudas and Sudas. One day Singh, King Sudas went hunting in the forest. There he spotted a pair of the tigers. They were actually a tiger and a tigress in mating. Shodas killed one of them by his arrow while the other turned into a demon and threatening of an avenge disappeared from the scene. In due course, King Sudhas organized a yajna in the auspicious of sage Vasistha. Towards the end of yajna, sage Vasistha went away to take bath. 
Meanwhile, the same demon arrived there in the guise of a sister and expressed his desire to eat non-vegetarian food. Then the demon arrived before the king in the guise of the cook. The king ordered him to cook meat for the sage. The cook cooked human flesh and served it before the sage. Says Vasista knew that the food contained human flesh. He cursed the king in anger to be a demon. Within three days, king Sada became a demon and began to roam in the forest. Since then, he ate the humans only. One day, Sadas in demon form saw Muni, who was in the process of mating his wife. The demon caught and ate the Muni, neglecting all the cries and wailing of his wife. The Brahmani angrily cursed the demon that as her husband had been killed while he was about to set his carnal lust, similarly he would also die right in the same process. King Sadas remained in the demon's form for twelve years more. After that, he recovered from the curse and began to rule like a pious king. One day, King Sadas saw the queen in an enormous condition and as impulse of carnal pleasure ran within his body. He made advances to satisfy his lust, but the queen who knew everything about the curse, stopped him, reminding him of the curse. Since then, the king stuck to celibacy. Since the king had no son, he allowed his queen, Madhyanti, to conceive a child with the help of sage Vasista. The queen did conceive, but the fetus remained unborn for seven years at length. At last, the irritated queen hit her fetus with a stone. This resulted in the birth of a child at once. The child was named Ashmak. The lineage of Ashmak grew as Ashmak, Mulak, Dasharad, Ilivil, Vishwash and Khatwang. Khatwang had killed many formidable demons fighting by the side of the gods. Pleased by his gallantry, the gods wanted to grant him a boon. Khat Wang wanted to know how long would live more. The gods told him that he would live for one muhurta more. Hearing this, Khat Wang came back on earth and prayed Lord Vishnu to take him in his refuse. At last he did annihilate with Lord Vishnu. Lineage of Khat Wang grew as Khat Wang, Dirgabhahu, Raghu, Aja and Dasharad. King Dasharath had three queens who gave birth to four sons, Rama, Lakshmana, Bharata and Satrigna. Rama was an incarnation of Lord Vishnu. His life too had lord of ups and downs. After being trained in archery, he and Lakshmana spent most of their boyhood time in the hermitage of sage Vishwamitra guarding his yajnas from the demons. After that, when Vishwamitra was taking them to Mithila, Lord Rama saved Ahalya, who had been converted into a stone by the course, curse of her husband, Sage Gautam. In Mithila, Lord Rama broke the bow of Lord Shiva and won Sita as his wife. When they returned to Ayodhya, King Dasharath decided to crown Rama as the new king, but misguided by Mantara, Queen Kaikeyi stubbornly sought that her son Bharata should be crowned as the new king, whereas Rama should be sent on an exile for fourteen years. Bonded by his promises that he had made to Kaikeyi earlier, King Dashrata had no choice but to accept her demand. Thus, to keep his father's words, Lord Rama accepted the exile. Sita and Lakshmana also followed his steps. In the forest, the demon king Ravana deceitfully abducted Sita. It was followed by meeting of Rama with Hanuman and Sugriva, killing of Bali, Sugriva's brother, finding of Sita by Hanuman in Lanka, bridging of the sea that separated Lanka, fierce battle with the demons and ultimately killing of Ravana by Lord Rama. After the completion of exile period, Lord Rama returned to Ayodhya and ruled for there for twelve years. Lord Rama had two sons, Lava and Kusha. 
लीनेज ऑफ कुशा ग्रू एज कुशा अतिथि निषद अनल नभ पुंडरी क्षेम धनवा देवानिक अहिंका रुरु परियात्रक देवल वंचल उल्का वज्रनाभा शंका युषिष्टवा विशिष्टवा हिरण्य पुष्य ध्रुव संधि सुदर्शन अग्निवर्णा सिंह राघा मरु प्रशुस्ता सुषधि अमार्षा शशुवान एंड विश्वभाव विश्वभा हैड ए सन बृहद हु वॉज किल्ड बाय अभिमन्यु इन द बैटल ऑफ महाभारत